Okay, so let's talk about the ultimate way to keep your side-by-side, -side, uh, regardless of the brand, um, nice and cool when you're driving around. This is going to be an overhead fan. Now, a lot of videos out there to uh, show you how to do this, um, the idea, the concept, but what they haven't really done is talk about the electronics. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to talk about the electronics, what you could choose and why you'd wanna choose it. Um, let me start off with the fan, right? This is a 14 inch radiator fan. And I chose the largest fan that I could physically fit in the space that I had. Um, the theory being the larger the fan, the more air it'll push, but also the larger the fan, the more air I can push at a slower RPM, right? So if you go out and you choose like an eight or 10 inch fan, that fan's gonna be screaming in order to push the air that you're gonna need. And that is gonna get annoying because you're gonna have a lot of noise just from the fan. So my idea is go with a big fan, maybe run it at about 50% of, of its rated uh, speed. I'll push the air I need and it'll be quieter. Um, you can get these fans pretty cheap online, but I actually chose uh, from my auto parts store, um, just a little bit higher quality, spent a couple extra bucks. So, and I, you can tell it's got some, it's definitely got some weight behind the motor. Now how I'm gonna mount this, I went ahead and I made myself this frame here. I uh, used some flat strap across here to mount the fan to it, um, both ends, and then I used some expanded metal, All right? This is a finger guard, and please, if you're gonna do this, put some way to prevent little fingers from getting up behind this because kids are just, you know, they love fans and you don't want them to lose their fingers. So these things are extremely sharp and they're gonna be running at a pretty high RPM. So put some kind of guard in there. Um, then I made a, pl a plate to put my switch and my potentiometer for my speed control. Flip this over, you can basically see what I did here. All right, cut the expanded out, just tack welded all of it across here nice and sturdy um, some people are mounting these fans directly to the roof uh other side by side on the plastic roof and that you know, there's quite a bit of weight here you know this is this is probably at least five pounds and you know mounting that right to the plastic it might work but i i just i felt better if it was going to be mounted in my roll cage so um this end um this is going to be the front of the of the side by side there's actually a, a bar that comes here that i can get to both sides of it so i don't have to drill all the way through the roll cage um, so I'm gonna, gonna put a bolt through here, uh, get a nut on the backside. And then down here, I actually just cut a slot out here. I'm going to use a hose clamp to clamp the backside. So I don't have to drill into my roll cage at all. Um, I, sh I should be good there. So let's talk a minute about the electronics. So I'm gonna be running some 12-2 wire um, and it's all rubber coated um, together. So it's gonna have weather protection on it there. And I'm gonna come up to a switch. Now, this fan runs 11 amps. So it's gonna spike a little above that on startup, but at wide open, it's gonna run 11 amps. And I'm not gonna run a relay. You know, if, if I was running more amps or I was, you know, my, my switch was gonna be located separate from my power wires, then I'd probably run a relay, but they're not. I'm gonna run the power right up to where this fan comes along the roll cage, um, and then I'm gonna to come to my switch. Now, you wanna make sure you get a switch rated, obviously high enough to handle what you're gonna push through it. And this switch is rated, like most of them, at 20 amps. So I should be good there to handle the load. Next is how are you gonna control the speed? You could just go right to a fan, kick it on, and things gonna be running high all the time. Um, but I wanna have some speed control behind it. So your choice are really three choices you got. You can get a rheostat, Problem with the rheostat is all it does is lower the voltage, which actually make your amps go up. It's hard on your motor, uh, kind of burn it out over time. And uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the cheapest way to do it, but you know, it's not the best way. Next, um, there are dimmers, but most dimmers aren't really rated to be a speed controller. They're rated to dim a light, which is completely different. You might get away with it, um, but you really, for the money, just get an actual speed controller. Now this here is a PMW, Pulse Width Mod speed controller, and it is rated at 20 amps at 60 volts. So it says basically it'll do 1200 watts. I'm gonna be running 12 volts at about 11 amps, so about 130 watts. So I'm well within spec of this speed controller. 
Now next, you know, I want to get a speed controller that is somewhat weatherproof. I mean, I know this is not, you know, you can't submerge this or anything like that, but you'll see a lot of them, they got a bunch of holes here and that's to dissipate the heat. But the problem is that's also going to let dirt and dust and we know that's a problem, right? So get something that is somewhat sealed up the best you can. It'll, it'll just prolong the life of this thing. So the other thing you want to really pay attention to when you get a speed controller is the hertz. And that's basically how fast this thing switches on and off. So if you're not familiar with what a PMW controller or speed controller actually does, um, it runs all the time. It pushes out 12 volts. So that makes your motor happy. But what it does is it turns it on turns it off, turns it on, turns it off. And it just keeps doing that um, as you're running it. So your motor is kind of just pulsing, but that actually saves your motor over lowering the voltage. So you keep the voltage the same, you just kind of turn it on and off and it makes it more efficient. Now, how fast it turns that on and off is controlled by this uh, potentiometer here, okay? But also there's a switching mechanism in here and it runs at a certain hertz. Now, why does that matter? Um, they sell them from, you know, 12,000 hertz, 16,000 hertz, you know, all the way up to, you know, 100,000 hertz. And you want to get one that's at least 20,000 hertz. And the reason why is if you get one less than 20,000, you're actually going to hear a whining, a really high pitch whine. And it's going to be annoying if, if you're sensitive to that. So the fan's going to put out a lot of air and there's going to be noise there. But the last thing you want is this really high pitched whine in your ear all the time. So spend a couple bucks. Get one that this one here is rated for 25,000 hertz. So I shouldn't have that problem. You know, 20 amp rating um, should do exactly what I want. So th that's basically um, the electronic part of it. The way I'm going to mount this is, uh, you know, this is actually going to be like this, mounted on the underside. And then I've got my potentiometer that's going to come up through this hole. And then I've got my switch that's going to sit in there. So I'll be able to just hit the switch, dial in my speed. Everything is right here together. Um, if I ever need to take it down, all I've got to do is disconnect two wires, go into the power. I can pull this entire fan assembly with all the electronics out in one. So it should make it real convenient. But hopefully this will help um, explain exactly how to do this project. It's really not that hard. Um, just takes a little bit of time to fabricate up your mount. And I'm going to go ahead and get this thing wired up and installed. And then we'll take it for a test drive and see how it does. So stay tuned. Okay, so here it is all mounted up. Um, I want to note uh, this particular roof that's on here. I don't know if this is factory. I don't know what they sold in 2013, but it's got this kind of depression area back here, which obviously shows up on the inside of your roll cage. So I wasn't able to put a fan back here. I had to put it in this center section. So if I can get a good picture of that for you, I'm going to give you an idea of what that looks like. You've got your cross brace here, a couple down the side, your brace across the front, a small piece here. And basically what I was able to do is uh, just bolt through here so I can get to the back side. This is just kind of a half round. And then again on the back, I just use some hose clamps. So the entire fan assembly will come out as one uh, with all the electronics. Just you know, disconnect the power wire. And you can see what I used here for my power wire. As I come down, I just ran this along the roll cage and it ends up going all the way down and slipping behind the panel back there and going in and tying into the battery. Obviously I fused it. So it's not tied to the ignition so I can turn the fan on and run it whenever I want. Um, I did measure this fan. It said that it takes about 11 amps, but um, it was less than that. I, I'd say we might have saw it spike to 11 on startup, but typically it was more around the 7 or 8 amp range. So let me go ahead and turn this on and give you an idea what it sounds like and the speed I can get out of this. So we'll turn the switch on, and then we've got our speed control. So this is the slowest, and it's just creeping there. Mm-hmm. 
I plan to run it about here at 50%. So if I were to show you the kind of airflow it's putting out, that's what you're seeing. And that's, that's really enough airflow of probably all I need, just kind of cruising around. But I'll show you what this thing will do on high. I mean, it's really, really putting out the air. So the manufacturer says this is somewhere around 1200, 1280 CFM. Uh, again, this is the 14 inch fan and, and I believe uh, every bit of that. <laughs> it's, it's got quite a bit. So the other thing I want to point out is I did cut, like I said, the expanded metal, which is, which is really just a safety deal. Um, you know, you, there's no way you're going to put your fingers up in here. There's, you know, even in the front back, it's completely encased. You know, that's just a safety thing for kids. You know, you're not going to get your finger through here. That, that's pretty tight. But if you do this job, you know, you know, consider that, you know, these blades are extremely sharp. I mean, they're razor sharp and that thing's really moving. So, you know, you don't, you don't want something like that to happen. So just consider that. Um, other than that, I'm extremely happy. This uh, project's been great. It, I think it's going to do exactly what I want. Driving around, you know, when you get above about 25, 30 miles an hour, I've got a half windshield and I've also raised uh, the half windshield up a, a couple inches. So I get the airflow through here and I get it through here. Um, these fans were my first attempt. You know, I thought I could just bolt some of these in here and I actually Velcroed them in here and, and they help. I mean, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of air blowing on you, but they only put out maybe, I don't know, 100, 150 CFM, but they, you know, they're controllable up, down, swivel them. So, you know, they're a pretty cheap option if you're just looking for something to get a little airflow. Uh, but again, at about uh, 25 miles an hour, um, you got a lot of air coming through the cab here because I haven't sealed it off yet. But the fan still overrides that even at 50% and it blows out all the air that's down here around your feet and legs which is what the whole goal is right to get that get that air out so anyway um if you like this video if it helps you out you know please like and subscribe let me know that what i'm doing is helping you out and giving you some ideas and i will see you on the next